dark save for light being cast from the big tv screen and the imminent sunrise that's teasing the one starry sky with whispers of morning g-e-o-r-g-e-w-i-t-t it's george witt it's george witt <laughs> yeah man dude we got we got our our mickey on this time and not castle of illusion no 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 we we decided that that per unit illusion we needed to go big or go home we needed a full <laughs> world of illusion <laughs> and uh we made that decision partially because we're all about going big but also partially because uh, i um can't remember anything anymore because i'm old <laughs> so Here's here's a little behind the scenes for how we we chose this game. I was like, dude, we should we should play Castle of Illusion. I loved that game when I was a kid. It's like, dude, we should totally play Castle of Illusion. I also loved playing that game as a kid. We should yeah. do that. And then like a couple of days later, you texted me and you were like, "Did you mean World of Illusion?" Yeah, and yeah, I, was like, no, I texted you saying like, "Like, did you mean World of Illusion?" And you were like, "Yeah." War- you, no, you said no, Castle of Illusion. I was like, "Okay, that's not the one that I played." So that's fine, you know, because this wouldn't be the first time that we played one that I hadn't played. So I was like, not not a big deal. I'll play that one. And I queued it up and um I was like, this is uh dude, this is bad. This is a <laughs> this is a this is a bad game. And 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 so I I actually have like my notes that I started on the other one and I got about fifteen minutes into it and I had like a page of like complaints that I knew I was gonna have to prune down. And then I just just like just for funsies, I queued up World of Illusion and then that's when I texted you the second time, being like, dude, dude, please, please, we need to play World of Illusion. It's just so much better. I don't wanna do this. Yeah. Well, and I, I was I was at work when I'm getting these text messages, so I was like, hmm. So I, you know, I just t- <laughs> pop open a new tab and I was like, maybe I'll remember when I see the game because like I haven't played it in a long time and like I can so clearly picture the box art. So I bring up, you know, Google image search for the box art for Castle of Illusion and World of Illusion. And I was like, uh oh, Castle of Illusion <laughs> box art, definitely the box art I was picturing, no question. And then I queued up like some random screenshots from the game and I was like, but World of Illusion is definitely the game I was picturing, so now I don't really know what to do with my life. So I I thought, I honestly did think about it for a while, because I was like, I am positive that I played both of these games, and I am positive that I don't have enough time to replay both of them right this minute, but I, I'm, I know I was thinking of Castle of Illusion, and then I got like... I don't know, half an hour into World of Illusion, I was like, uh, we, we made the right choice. We did the right thing. And yep. I do not regret anything that has happened since. No, no regrets. So um, <laughs> that, that kind of leads tangentially into what your, what, I, what your nostalgia experience is. Because I have a very um, kind of weird story for that. But, but what was yours? Oh, mine was actually super simple. And uh, to that point, though, I'm surprised it has taken this long for this to come up because I think this is the first game where I can say that I played this because of my older brother's neighborhood friend. So I don't, I don't want to name him. I don't, I don't want to call anybody out. Let's just call him random guy. So a random guy that lived in, in my neighborhood, he was actually even older than my brother, but they were closer in age. They were friends. And he, by, by, by calling him random guy, it definitely sounds like you just lit a hobo into your house. Like, well, I mean, yes, maybe so. Don't judge Sorry, me. No, ju- no judgment. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 fine if if the 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 uh, homeless person that lived in your neighborhood was also a big gamer. You know, I mean, like that's he cool, totally was. You know? And and random guy was the stereotypical kind of like ordered VHS of subbed, not dubbed anime directly mm. from China. That was like bootlegged from japan like right he was because it was the only good one yes you know? he was he was a nerd's nerd right <laughs> so i mean like he was a lot older than me but he was very very nice to me and he was very open with his his game collection and because he lived so close to us like i could just ride my bike down the street to his house and he would like let me borrow a game and because i'm a big disney nerd like i would borrow 
apparently both of these games, Castle and World Evolution, from him like constantly. So uh, this was a game that I didn't own, but I had like nearly unlimited access to it because Random Guy was just super generous with his library. Excellent. Mine, so basically when we when we decided that we were going to start playing this and then we decided to play the one I actually played, I was like, all right, this is good because like, I remember, you know, playing this, enjoying it. It was it was pretty good, you know. It was I I, de- I definitely owned it, you know. So I was like that that's good. That's good. And then when I started playing it, I realized that I played this game way more than I remembered playing it. Because, <laughs> because the minute the music queued up, I was just kind of like, "Oh, no, this is way too familiar." And then like as I was playing through the game, I was like, "Oh yeah." And then the, the, this happens and then this happens and I was like, and the music, I I could like picture I was like, "I I think I put a, a lot of hours, a lot of hours into this game. That I just don't remember. It's not like, you know, A Link to the Past, which is awesome, by the way. Um, uh, you know, where, where I, I remember it being a huge part of my childhood. But I think that this game was, now that I'm like, was forced to think about it, was kind of my junk food game, you know, mm. where if I just, you know, had a half an hour, I just pop this thing in and just play it. But apparently I had about a half an hour of free time way more than i remember or certainly more than i do now well and i i mean we don't have to go too deep into the the overall length but one of the things i i have in my notes is i did not remember how short this game actually is right and because i mean if you played it a lot you could probably get it down to 90 minutes which means, oh, yeah, if, if all you're doing is just bopping around for 30 minutes, like that's a solid chunk of the game you're getting to play through and experience. And the, the password system is good. So uh, you can jump to whatever levels you want to play, you know, pretty easily. And that's like, that's an insidious way for something to get deeply buried into your long term memory, right? Because Link to the Past, or like for me, it would have been, I mean, It was also linked to the past, but for me, it also would have been like the early Final Fantasies. Like those are huge books, right? Like you're sitting down with, you know, War and Peace or Dostoevsky and you're like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to read this because I need it in my life. And like you have clear memories of that. What you don't have clear memories of are the tens of thousands of hours you've sunk into like family guy or the simpsons or friends and yet when you see you're like walking you know down a hotel room and the the maid is coming out and the tv happens to be on and you're like oh that's the episode episode of the simpsons where this and then this and then this and then this happens and then homer makes this joke and then marge makes this face and you're like why is all of that in there yeah yeah no exactly that which was you know when, when i just started playing this game i was like oh yeah and then and then, you know, this happens and then this and I was like, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> so. um, So, yeah, I actually have a bizarre kind of like it was like it was basically like, you know, I, I went into, you know, an area and I was like, all right, good. No, I've got a very clear idea of what's going on here. A clear idea of what's happening. And somebody like reaches up and like pause at my face and all of a sudden I realized I've been wearing the nostalgia goggles the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I had them on and I was also like, Oh my God. You know? So, uh, so it was, it was interesting. But, you, um, you woke up in the matrix goo and you're like, uh, nothing's real. But, but instead it was a, it was a giant faced cloud in the middle of nowhere, you know? And there were, uh, there were little like candy things around because <laughs> so you, I, you, you realized your, your whole world was an illusion. I would say that, uh, yes, yes, I would, I got nothing to, to that, that was, that was pretty clever. I, I feel like to, that's the kind of terrible joke we usually end the episode on. So do we just like cut it now? Like, are we just, are we, do, do we have to be done? <laughs> All right. No, let's talk about graphics. But, but yeah, let's, let, let, let's do that. So, um, overall, um, I, I really liked the visuals for this one. I thought that, uh, uh, you know, so so visuals for the sake of visuals, I, I one thing that I definitely think is you could say is that the visuals are very varied um, by stage. You know, like they they they're definitely not samey. You can't. Oh yeah, you, you, you it's it's that. not palette swapping and and tiles for days. Like it's every each level feels completely unique. Right. Right. Each. I'm not sure how they they actually do the naming because there's like a level that's a theme, and then within that there's like stages. 
like little mm-hmm. little areas. So let's say level for the big part and then stage for the smaller parts. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So the levels are very different. Correct. Um, the levels are very different. I think that because honestly, if I had to guess, I would say what happened was they were like, hey, we want to make, you know, a, a platformer, obviously, because that's basically what this is. Um, like we want to make a platformer and we want to have like this amazing variation. Like we want to have like a cloud level and a candy level and a underwater level and all this sort of stuff. And somebody's like, how can we in any way have a cogent through line for all this? It's like, what if they were just in this like illusion thing? We've already done castle of illusion. So what if it was just like literally all of it was just a big illusion. Somebody's like, yep, ship it, you know, because the, the plot is not, anything to write home about is this isn't a, a, a narrative yes. <laughs> yeah, story that, that's, game. that's not what what you're buying here <laughs> but yeah but i think that basically they started with the varied visuals and then found kind of a loose way to tie all of it together yeah i mean it's a uh, it's the magic of the framing device being magic is I mean, because, I mean, it's Mickey and Donald and, and other, you know, Goofy and Peter around, but it's like, yeah, they're already cartoon characters. You can already kind of get away with whatever you want, but that their universe still has rules. Like, the universe Mickey lives in is still mostly normal with, like, normal buildings and normal cars and normal things. So if you want to do a bunch of fantastical nonsense, you either have to put him in a specific world that's all that brand of fantastical nonsense, and if you want to do all kinds of different fantastical nonsense, then it's just like, oh, we have this framing device from an earlier game where Mickey is like a magician, but then like real magic comes in to screw things up. And at that point, it's just like you have unlimited set pieces. We can do five, because I think there's five levels. You can do five totally unrelated, unconnected, totally disjointed levels, but you just have that one thread connecting them of magic now it, it's a different magic okay now other magic and and it feels totally cohesive because of that like that thread is is very very thin but it's very very strong it's diamondonium right it's just you're like <laughs> this is all i need no dude you and your bargain basement diamondium it's diamondilium <laughs> you know that's just superior one come on <laughs> no um no agreed one of the other things that this game does i think it's one of the first ones that we've dealt with this directly which is that and i thought okay so it's it's a disney game and not only is it a a disney you know it's not just like a disney made game it is a like straight up this is a mickey game yes you know yeah and it's is clearly like directed at younger children i thought they did a really really good job with non-violent visuals you know (laughs) so yes (laughs) i have some specific notes about this (laughs) Well, okay, well, I'll, I'll say my thing, and then we'll see if, we, if we're aligned. But, no, I thought that it was interesting because instead of, you know, like, a bad guy approaches you, and it's like, well, because even in the uh, Castle of Illusion for the five terrible minutes I played it, <laughs> you throw apples at people, mm-hmm. and that, like, that makes them turn back into magic, I guess. But um, But for this one, you literally just, you know, turn them into, like, a butterfly or, you know, into a you know, crawdad or what have you. But uh, it, I thought that that was a interesting way to handle combat in a way that is not inherently violent. So I, I agree with you. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm going to make the cynical statement, not because I actually feel this way, but just, I think it's interesting to be an adult now and playing something that was obviously directed at young children, which is, uh, you have like a magic cape that you like swing out in front of you and it makes like some little sparkles mm-hmm. and that's essentially your weapon, right? And you you like magic the enemies and some of them, uh, like in the first level that's all like foresty themed, you magic them into like forest things. So like the the guys that kind of look like flowers turn into flowers and the flying like angry bug things turn into like beautiful butterflies. And and at first I was like, oh, that that's a really clever way to non-violently subdue them. But then I can't separate the fact that I am an adult and you get conditioned to things that children's mind just don't do. And in the later stages when you're – it's kind of like Alice in Wonderland themed and like level four and five. 
there's mm-hmm. there's the card men who are sentient mm-hmm. playing cards and when you magic them they turn into regular playing cards which actually does seem super violent <laughs> like you are it, robbing them is, of their humanity <laughs> uh yes no you are um Break, well, okay, no, if we want to talk, okay, so, so which one of these two things do you think is worse? Because that, I agree, that's bad. What about the fact that you, using your most powerful magical spell, the Alakazam, <laughs> rend them into multiple people <laughs> and, 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 and then dominate their minds to do your will and move in a perpetual fashion or stand so bone rigidly still that you can walk across their interlocked bodies? Yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> a- assuming that there's no afterlife in Alice in Wonderland, then I suppose the sweet release of inanimate death would be better than being yeah. trapped in an eternal bridge coma where Mickey and Donald well, walk across your face forever. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is that when he turns them, I mean, just to play play both sides of it, when he turns them into a card, we don't know that they've been robbed of their sentience. Yeah, they may right? just be I mean, robbed be of like, their autonomy and ability to communicate. <laughs> yeah, no, this could very well be like in, in Superman, the Superman, the movie, like the Phantom Zone. <laughs> like they are just in this two dimensional space and like, you know, <laughs> and basically all, all you can hear from the, the two of hearts is like, you will bow down before me, Mickey, <laughs> you, and one day your heirs, you know, like, <laughs> Yes, and 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 I, I we we've had a lot of fun here today, but I, I do the cynicism aside. I do because I'm sorry; those jokes are funny, and I will enjoy making them forever. But I do actually completely agree with you that no child, not even like a slightly older kid, would see any of the combat and believe it to be violent. Right? There's. There's nothing that looks like a blow landing or a projectile landing, right? There's nothing that's um, really combative about it at all. It's just like, oh, you used your magic to make them not want to be mean anymore, right? And it's very, like, it's it's very well done. Like, it's a very good execution of how do we make violence Um, Mm nonviolent. The reverse is handled in a different way, though, because when you get hit... As Mickey, you say ouch, and Donald kind of does like a Donald yell. But I mean, like, you visibly look pained. I mean, it's cartoony, mm-hmm. but like, your your right. face kind of twists up. And when you lose all your life, you sort of like just collapse. And then it just fades to black and the level starts over. So there's no indication mm-hmm. that you died in the sense that like you died, but th- there has to be some visual way to indicate like, oh, don't let that happen, and then we took control away from you, and you start back over at the beginning of the level, right? They they still have to communicate it, but it's it's done in a slightly more obvious way. Like, oh, that guy threw a thing, and it hit you in the face, and Mickey said, ouch. And nobody likes to right. say ouch. Yes. Um, two, two things on that. One is um, they, okay, so as far as, like, behavior modeling, right? So I think that that's kind of a good way to kind of look at, like, violence children is that they were to then model this behavior right so if you put them in front of like call of duty they'd pick up a nerf gun and like you know shoot it like if they want to play call of duty they do that but i remember actually um my friend and i would play like real life play like this game and it involved us taking a small sheet and like waving it at each other you know and it was like and then you know in our mind it's like oh i got you and then you know like they just had to like turn into a flower and you know that was it and so that 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 is i think pretty good and so then the villains are the ones who are actually using violence you don't want to be a sith lord you want to be obi-wan you know so so i think that 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 works um pretty well and to speak to what the one of the things that you said which i thought was a very interesting and again clever choice considering that their target age range is you don't have lives you have tries yes yeah. So that's the thing is you don't die. You just, just you, you just have to try yeah, again. Just try again. Yeah. Um, no, the and and everything about the 
combat interactions seem like they were very carefully thought through. Like we cannot give Mickey a pistol and have him shoot his way <laughs> to Pete and then gangland style execute Pete by shooting him through the back of his fat dog neck. Like we just can't do that. <laughs> and and I know like people do lots of like gritty, you know, like fan art and stuff of, of Disney characters and like, there's some cool like gritty Disney princesses and things where like Ariel has like a hook hand and she's all like sea monster and like, okay, I get it. But this is an official Disney product. And right. there are, cause we, you know, we played toy story, which was a freaking mess. And there are lots and lots and lots of Disney games and games that where they licensed out Disney characters. And they're not all this well thought out, from no. a visual perspective let alone all the other stuff we still got to talk about but the each one of those little things like you don't have you don't hit people you have like a magic cape you don't you know when you die you just like kind of sit down and look like you're tired and then you try again and it says the word mm-hmm. tries at the top of the screen right it's even your health meter is just uh, like playing cards that are when mm-hmm. you have that hit point that you can see the card face and when you don't you just see the back of the card it's not little hearts that get mm-hmm. empty it's not a number that counts down like it's very it's very safe and friendly but it still communicates the same information you don't want this meter right. to go all the way down you don't want your tries to get to zero you don't want the enemies to n- knock you out or whatever yeah even the lives power ups are um or like top hats, you know, like for like, you know, like a magician's hat, yeah. right? They're not like your your head, you know, where it's just kind of like, oh, well, you need another version of you. It's like, no, you just need this this additional item to, to, to try again. There is There's- one mistake, though, in that the health is candy, candy. but you collect yeah. playing cards. Like the, the yeah. playing card should be the health because that's what your health meter is. I and it's one of those things like the second you realize that there's an incongruence there, you never make the you don't confuse them ever again. I just wonder why they made that choice. Yeah, I think if I had to guess probably it was, you know, just it, it, it especially in games of this era is it, it was just like power ups are health like it's health so what would you know like what 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 would increase your health well candy would okay but it's like no that's not the frame that we've put here you know but it would just to me and honestly in in all of these other well thought out visuals that one does seem it stands out as sloppy you know because everything else is pretty well pulled together real fast though quick tangent um so sorry when you said um y- you know like Mickey pulling out a gun and like shooting his way through the thing, <laughs> I don't know why that my brain took that and then like because I thought like gritty like what what would a gritty Mickey reboot look like, and all I could picture was Mickey you know driving a car and Donald turning around like putting the gun <laughs> on the back of the thing <laughs> from Pulp Fiction and saying like you mean to tell me you're saying just blam <laughs> and then, just like, goofy Pete, just yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I am willing to slap bet that there is fan art of either Mickey and Goofy or Mickey and Donald in Pulp Fiction clothing. Ooh, no, no, no because, you already owe me one. And I'm pretty sure that you're right. right. Like, I think I've actually seen it <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, in all of the internet. I mean, yeah, certainly, gonna, you know, just take a little note here. Pulp. Mm-hmm. Fiction, <laughs> which looks weird <laughs> next to World of Illusion. Anyway, um, so we can't, uh, we cannot talk about the visuals without at least me. I think probably both of us gushing about the character sprites because not only are they absolutely gorgeously rendered and incredibly beautiful, but there are some details that I noticed in these character sprites that almost gave me pause, and I was like, oh no have I been missing this detail in all the other games we've played and now I need to like go retcon my feelings about the visuals or has has the other games just not been doing this? And I'm pretty sure they've just not been doing this, which is there is virtually no time, not none, but virtually no time where Mickey or Donald look like they are stamped onto the background because whenever you are standing still, they kind of like look side to side 
and like well mm-hmm. donald looks side to side mickey kind of looks up and like over his shoulder and mm-hmm. his pupils actually move where he's looking and so you have this constant sense because you know they're trapped in the world of illusion and they have to try and get to pete so that they can escape and you get this constant sense that it's like oh he's aware that he's not supposed to be there and he is looking for the way out and when you because there's an idol animation and mickey's idol animation unfortunately is his very stereotypical like the way he looks like on a pocket watch you know with like the feet together and that that i feel like wasn't the smartest choice but um donald's idol animation is very like sonic the hedgehog where he like looks right at the camera um but the rest of the time if you only stand still for a second or while you're moving they kind of like they look up and they sort of look to the side and they're not actually looking at any specific object but because the world is very populated with you know deep background uh mid-ground and then foreground it always looks like they're looking at something and the fact that like their pupils move around and like when you duck as uh, Mickey and you crawl, he actually like his pupils go up. Like he's looking to make sure like nothing falls on him while he's crawling on the ground. I was like, this is so unbelievably thoughtful. Like they really deeply look like they are aware of their environment. And I don't think, I can't think of another game we've played where I would have said that about the characters like Mickey knows he's in the forest and when he's underwater, he knows he's underwater. And when he's in, you know, gingerbread land, he knows he's in gingerbread land. And even though it's the exact same animation in all of those places, <laughs> the fact that he appears to be studying his surroundings really makes him feel connected to the environment. Hmm. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't really think about it. I, I didn't think about it quite that way. What I actually wrote down is why does Mickey look terrified all the time? He do- And Donald is, Pissed, but that one makes more sense because he's Donald Duck. Yeah, Donald is not known for temper control. Like he is not, he's not, he's not a a, a garnet. You know, he's, <laughs> he he's is not more of a peridot. You know, <laughs> just. Um, but yeah, no, that and but but yes, yeah, so it is it is very evident that you know their idle not not their idle animation because that's that's when they actually do the things you describe, but just like when they're you're not actively moving they do look they they are they they do have just they're in constant motion like humans would be like real people would and i think that the um it kind of also continues to sell their characters like for instance when you run it's not like a jogging run it's like a panicked you know oh god like hands in front of you running away kind of a thing so it i would say that um it's i don't know if this is what happened but it this type of animation and the thoughtfulness behind the animation is very reminiscent of like the thoughtfulness behind disney animation you know yeah no it it absolutely feels certainly i i can't imagine it's the same people right it's a huge organization it's a completely right. different medium um i'm sure it's not the exact same kinds of people but there's probably a lot of either direct knowledge sharing or they told people like hey you're gonna design art assets for this game it better freaking look like the cartoons like mickey needs to look and move like mickey mouse and donald needs to look and move like donald duck like when mickey squats uh to to crawl which you don't have to do a lot but you do have like a couple times he kind of almost like lays on his stomach which is funny Mm because i mean a mouse is a four-legged animal so it's kind of weird to see him like crawl that way um but when uh donald ducks and he's not crawling he has like a little shake animation because it's supposed to be like he's ducking like in fear and like he pulls his his hat like down around the sides of his head and like it's it's even that is like they wouldn't duck the same way because they have different personalities they're different people they would and i mean donald is a duck like his entire anatomy is different so there's just this huge uh, very high level of polish in terms of these characters move and behave in this way in all of our cartoons and all of our, you know, materials and do not make them do anything in this game that you could not find like a, a reference in one of our animated features for them doing. And I think that now, now that I'm, I'm kind of continuing to think about it, I, I think that basically what this game feels like is that somebody said, look, we don't have the game knowledge or wherewithal or what have you to make a mechanically 
like amazing game, you know, like this is going to be a simple platformer, right? So what can we do? We can create a visually stunning game. So let's vary the visuals extraordinarily. Let's make every area have its own feel. Let's make the animations really solid. Let's make the character animations very solid. Let's just make a visually stunning game. And and honestly, I think that's what they did, you know? Now, is it visually stunning by like what we would call visually stunning today? No, it's not Journey, you know? <laughs> But that being said, for uh, games of this era, um, absolutely, I would call this um, a, a, a very you know, visually stunning game. But um, one, one other thing that I do want to touch on, um, because this is normally when we do it, is um, I really like the way they kind of handled the hitbox for the cape, because I thought they did do something clever there, which was, um, first of all, the hitbox for the cape in general is very generous. Yeah, it's huge. Right? Yeah, I mean the the cape itself is huge, and the give on it is is sufficient, right? But um, the cape transforms people, but you have a magic whiff like beyond the cape. It's like a that stuns tra- trail of stars, exactly. That stuns people, and I thought that was kind of a clever way to be like, no, no, they weren't close enough to you for you to hit them. But they were close enough for you to stun them, which then allows you to like take a couple of steps forward and then actually hit them. You yes, know? because you can you can cape again before they are de-stunned. Correct. So I thought that was um, I thought that was pretty kind of a, a clever way to kind of create. <laughs> so in uh, in 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 chemistry, um, we with, with the statistical analysis that we normally do is um, you have control limits, which is to say that when the data falls outside of the subset, you are out of control. But you also have warning limits, which say that when the data falls outside of the subset, you should look into it, but you're not like out of control yet. But it's, you know, like, hey, things are probably going to become out of control very soon. And this this kind of made me feel like that, where it's just kind of like, okay, well, when you hit with the cape, you're good. When you hit with the the stardust, it's like like no, you you were you were in your warning limits. You know, you were two standard deviations outside of the mean, not three. Well, and importantly, it's it's not just feedback because if you whiffed and it was just like then you took a hit or something, that would be like a punitive way of teaching a lesson. But with stunning, it's like ah, you were close, champ. Like get you know get in a little bit tighter and take another crack at it, and we're gonna have this card person you know blink for a second and not move so that you can kind of set up and try again right because a lot of the the little mechanical stuff we'll get into more like it definitely feels like they erred toward what would make this a little easier for a child right or for someone who's not very experienced at video games because i mean this was this is like 92 i think so i mean this is a time in history when you could totally imagine a young parent who's like a fan of Disney or grew up with the Mickey Mouse Club or something who likes computers and technology, who's just like, oh, I'm going to try, you know, this newfangled video game thing, right? Like, I heard a, I heard a lot more of my friend's parents casually, randomly putting Mario into the Nintendo in the 80s and 90s. I don't really hear about people that same age now casually being like oh, i'm just gonna fire up grand theft auto and see what this whole what's this whole <laughs> skyrim thing all about like because the the knowledge you need is so much more and the the controller is more off-putting and the experience is more off-putting and just everything is there's like a a way more complicated knock to get into the club right and right. in some ways that's just an artifact of the technology advancing and it really sucks that like if you're older or you're less technologically inclined or whatever your stereotype that's kept you out of the club has been that 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 knock is so much more complicated but i I could believe someone sitting down to this and not understanding right away how the cape thing works and the reason i could say that is because i went through this like i Mm -hmm. i flung out the cape and when i realized that the stars hitting them made them like you know go flashy stunned I didn't immediately associate it with flashy stunned. I immediately associated it with they take more hits the further they are away. And, Mm. and that led to the identical behavior of, Oh, but then I can get in close and, and, you know, cape swat them and then they'll transform. 
And the reason I found out that it's stunning and not just making it take more hits is because I tried to stardust someone into a transformation and you can't. <laughs> and I was just like, cape, yeah. cape, 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 <laughs> and nothing's happening. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it, right? But the 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 end goal or the end result was the same. Like I still figured it out. Right. And so two things on that. One is um, they actually uh, – so to to and this is kind of my caps on visuals, but um, uh, they they actually uh with the enemy placement in World One One, um, <laughs> they they actually so that the ant people that attack you, there's a group of three and then a space and then the final one. So I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> So even if you cape right before that first one tags you, the Stardust will hit the last one, you know? So basically they're like, they're they're set up so that way you can't not stun that guy. So even if up until that point you've always been tight and they've always transformed, then you know, you're like, oh, huh, that last guy didn't die. And then you get in close to him and you hit him again. So at a minimum, you know that the Stardust has an effect, which I thought was very clever. And to, to, to speak to one of the other points you just said is something that I myself struggle with a lot, um, which is the, the issue, I think, is that so we've grown up with video games. We've known them for our entire lives and we've been with them, the medium as it's progressed. So the problem is that like you and I get really, really excited to share some of the games that we enjoy with some people who just have not been involved in the medium that much. Right. For example, like, you know, let's take The Last of Us, right? An amazing game, visually stunning, amazing story, really fascinating, right? Um, and we were like, I, I want you to have this. But the thing is, they're just their game literacy isn't high enough. That's not a bad thing. It just is what it is. So it's kind of like me saying to Teddy, like, hey, just so you know, um, Dune is a really, <laughs> really interesting book. <laughs> handing it off to him and being like i can't even what well, the, you know? the visual and, for and that the, for me is you pulling like a dr seuss abc book out of his hands and just being like now it's time for you to upgrade son and just sliding dune onto him which would probably be <laughs> about the size of his whole torso <laughs> yeah it's just like get get on this <laughs> and and so so that's and 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 that is to a degree on on us because uh, I've got a a friend of mine who recently has just started getting the games and there was like a game I'm like you got to play this game it's so much fun I enjoy it so much and uh, and it was just not at all her bag and so I was like uh, well all right and so over time I started like introducing more varied and different games and then. I was like, oh, okay, this one is actually a much, much better way to introduce you to this kind of medium. Yeah, and actually it was it was Minecraft, mm, you know? Nice. Because it's like because the first thing I gave her was like a first person shooter, and she was actually more adroit at it than I, I I expected offhand. But it was just when when it was like with Minecraft, it's like it allows you to take it at a much slower pace. It it is a much more uh, emergent unfolding game. So um so yeah, so so anyways, to to to, to kind of wrap up this rambling up <laughs> is uh is i think that that this game is very approachable um and i think the part of the issue is that a lot of the times we want to introduce people to the games that we really enjoy but really we need to be mindful with the games that we introduce people to because you need to give them a game that is at their game literacy level yeah and i think uh you and i are both hyper aware of this right now in theory and will become even more aware of it in practice because we both have small children that we are going to mm -hmm. expect to play video games and play video games with us and enjoy all the things we enjoy because that's how parents work and uh like like i mean my you know my older daughter is four and a half and like she's just about to the point where i'm like hmm, maybe maybe her and i might start like sitting down in front of mario or something soon and kind of seeing how she handles a controller and stuff because i mean like she knows what a controller is because she's seen us use it to like put a dvd on the playstation or uh we like i have a broken controller that i gave her so she would stop grabbing for the real one so like she <laughs> understands that it has buttons and that you press the buttons and things happen but like i think a game like this that is visually satisfying and mechanically satisfying 
maybe a little bit less so, but still satisfying to an adult with a lot of games literacy, but still approachable to a kid. Like these are the gems, right? Like these are the ones mm. where it's like, Hey, look at this. It has familiar characters and it's pretty and it's fun. And it's probably simple enough that you can play it, but it's also enjoyable enough that I won't like be clawing my eyes out while you learn how to play this. It's, it's like the, uh, the, the um, Chronicles of Narnia or, you know, yeah. like, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's like Lion Jesus. You know, that's the thing <laughs> is that there's a lot of like stuff in there that even adults can enjoy. And it's a good bridge book where it's like, you know, like the, the, the verbiage, the prose isn't like so over the top where, you know, you struggle with it. But it's like, but there's some meaty stuff in there. So it's like, so, you know, like, like compare, com- compare the lion to, uh, to some, some, something else you might have heard about. Some other bearded so. gentleman. Um, so so I'll, I'll, I'll have one other thing I want to say about uh, visuals, just to give a nod to what was probably a lot of work on some designer's part that I don't think either of us got to appreciate very much. Um, I did not get to play this game two-player. Uh, I just didn't have an opportunity to play with Susan. And then um, I was kind of thinking, like, you know, this game makes, like, a really big deal out of the fact that it's Mickey and Donald, so I actually started a two-player game just so I could see if there was anything immediately obviously different about it. And Mickey and Donald can interact with each other in very, very simple ways. Like, if you magic cape directly at each other, they do respond. They don't take damage, but they respond like they got hit. And uh, right. more importantly, you can do, like, a team jump. So, like, Donald can jump onto Mickey's hands and mm-hmm. and you get a very detailed, unique animation for Mickey holding Donald and Donald balancing on Mickey's hands. And, you know, the reverse is true. And then when you jump, the whoever's on the bottom also does like a little push. So you actually jump higher and you don't need that anywhere in the game. But just the fact that they were like, well, yeah, these two people exist in the same space. Of course, they can interact with each other a little bit. And of course, they're going to stand differently on their friends' upturned palms than they would on like a floating magical rock platform. So it's like, you know, like you do, like you do. And I just like that was one of those things that I when I saw that little animation, I was like, I kind of want to play through the whole game two player now because there's probably a bunch of really (laughs) thoughtful animations in here I'm never going to see. And and I also didn't get a chance to play a two player, but actually, if memory serves, it they vary it up mechanically a little bit as well. Like um, in in World One One, where you jump on the uh, the the logs, right, and it rockets you mm-hmm. up, right. Um, you know how there's always a counterweight. Oh yeah, at least on the first. It's 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 somebody. It there is no counterweight in two player mode. Right. You know, so they do little things like that that force you to interact with the other person, you know, so it yeah, I wish that I had gotten a chance to do this two player, but it does. They again, they do like little smart things to that. And, and we've touched on this a couple of times in games before where it's just kind of like your biggest um, thing is that uh, the the new game plus. Right. It's, it's just such a low intensity way to add a whole lot to the game. And basically all they did was they were just kind of like, hey, what if what if some of these puzzles like we change them so that way it necessitates two players, you know, in, in really easy ways. It's like, all we have to do is just remove the counterweight on this because they have a counterweight, you yeah. know, like, which again, that's it. So, approachable to a kid, but still clever enough that it makes the game interesting to play two player. If you are, you know, more, more games literate. I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah. I like games later. I'm going to try really hard. I'm going to fail at this for a while. I'm going to try really hard to work like old and young or like, tech literate and tech illiterate out of my vocabulary for this discussion and try and use games literate because you could be a kid who sucks with technology, but is super games literate. (laughs) You could be an adult who is awesome with technology, but is super games illiterate. So like, I think that is the right fulcrum to use. Excellent. Yeah, no, I, I, I do like that, that, that phrase, but on to sound it, dude, music's great. I don't know. Like, like honestly, I, I, I still. So we've talked a number of times with a number of games. We're like, it's it's fine. It's fine when you're listening to it, and then the minute you stop listening to it, it leaves your mind forever. This is not that. <laughs> it's, it's not. I don't want to say like it's catchy because I'm not like 
you know, j- like jamming out in my car to, <laughs> you know, Castle of Illusion music, but World of Illusion? it's really enjoyable. It, at least from my point of view. No, it, I'm I'm totally with you. And I had I had a weird ramp up because you definitely played this game more as a kid than I did. Um, so I think it's it's a little bit deeper in your bones than it is for me. But I uh, I sat down to it and Sue had never played this game. And like when I'm doing most of my research playing, she's, you know, nearby. And she was like, why isn't this like Disney music? Like, why don't I recognize any of this music? <laughs> and I was like, well, it's it's it, I mean, it's it's World of Illusion. Like it it's its own thing. Like they're not going to just shove like Mickey mouse club in there. Like this, this is its own thing. The music in this is yeah. Disney music because it's the world of illusion music, but it doesn't have like little mermaid music. It's David. And, Pumpkins. Yeah, exactly. It's David. Pumpkins. It, it's its own thing. <laughs> David pumpkins would totally have fit into this thematic universe too. Um, <laughs> but well, he might've fit in castle of illusion better. Um, but yeah, but that was like, that was an interesting uh, thing for me to try to unpack because I knew right away that she understood what I was saying, but like I was struggling to form what I felt like was a coherent sentence. So I was like, no, it it is Disney music because this is a Disney thing, but it's not right. Disney music. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's it's Disney music by virtue of it being a Disney game. It's it's kind of like how you know the president can't leak classified information because by virtue of him saying it, <laughs> it like it becomes declassified so it's like you, you can't you know like when, when when there is the law you know when it's it's a phrase that people like kick around a lot but you know the by definition mm-hmm. you know yes. kind of a thing it's like this is by definition disney music because it is music that is occurring in a disney place therefore it is disney music yeah exactly but uh that's all a long-winded way of saying I agree with you that this music is really good. Not uh, iconic in the way some game music is thought of when people think of good game music, but like it's, it's good. And the music is every bit as varied as the visual theming. Yes. Yeah. The music's very, very varied. It's, and it, like I said, it's just, it's, it's, it's actually memorable and very enjoyable. Um, And again, you know, I, just kind of feel that this was this place where they said like we are not going to create a game that is going to be mechanically complex or intense or anything that anybody's going to write home home about and i and i feel like there was somebody you know i don't want to say like an exact i feel like this would be just kind of you know like a a, a lowly person on the tone pole that's like nobody nobody watches disney movies or at least back in the day no, none of the old school disney movies are like wildly complex in their plot you know (laughs) they're not they're not thinkers you know but what they are is musically and visually stunning you know and in a good enjoyable digestible way to take in that type of story and that's what this game is is it's it's the audio the the music is very enjoyable the visuals are stunning and uh and it's just kind of a nice low-key way to just take in a video game is it anything that you're going to say like they did this one mechanic no no it's not that the little mermaid isn't that you know no and and i think the the distinction that people rightfully make with disney movies and i think this would be true of disney theme parks and disney video well the good disney video games is there's a difference between something that's you know fun for the whole family and something that is for children And Mm -hmm. having children, I have become very much aware of this distinction because there are things that my children like that I'm like, no, this is garbage and you're dumb and wrong for liking this. And then there are things that they like and I like and we get different things out of it. My daughters Mm -hmm. love watching Animaniacs, not for the same reasons I love watching Animaniacs. But at the same time, every time my two-year-old is like, moana i'm like yes we should listen to the moana soundtrack because it is amazing right oh yeah no i mean for luckily megan and i were very lucky for because the two two of the shows that teddy asked for because occasionally i asked for like octonauts and i'm like (laughs) i don't even know that one oh yeah it's it it, it's 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 fine it (laughs) 
it, it it's it's innocuous as far as kids go but it's it's just it's you know underwater learn stuff about underwater stuff mm-hmm. but um they they do the, the one of those things in kids stuff that i hate this is a great tangent one of the <laughs> things in kids stuff that i hate which is the um a lot of the characters have verbal tics you know so like one of the characters is a pirate and so he adds you know, on me hardy's onto like the end of 90 percent of his statements um and Matey's is the other one you know <laughs> So it's just kind of like, no, I get it. You're a pirate. You can stop now. Um, whereas that, but so th- that that's in there. Um, that's fine. But uh, Teddy, two of Teddy's favorites are Steven Universe oh, yes. and Avatar. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So occasionally he's like, I want, I want Avatar. I'm like, yeah, you do. Let's. And it, it'll be funny though because he just he's enjoying it from like the the, the you know like the again like with this game like the fun visuals and you know like the music and it's just it's just kind of like a fun little thing for him and i'll be like so uh you know i'll like, like this is the next episode he's like no i want to watch this other episode i'm like we are watching them in order because it's important because otherwise this plot doesn't make any sense to me and i know you don't care <laughs> and you really like this one episode because there's this one stunning visual in there but i'm done watching that episode because i swear to god if i don't get to see zuko's beautiful storyline come to an amazing conclusion because that's the next episode is when he confronts his father i'm gonna lose my mind so that's what we're gonna watch teddy um yeah so but i think this this is part of what makes disney disney right is that uh when they do video games correctly when they do movies correctly when they do theme parks correctly when they do what they do it is fun for the whole family and not it's something for kids. And Agreed. and I think that that uh, has not bled into their video game uh, endeavors as nearly as well as it has with like their movies and their TV shows and, and the other things that they've done. Um, but this, like, if if they could just make more Disney games of like this caliber where it's just like, hey, it's some familiar Disney stuff. It's also some new stuff that's just unique for this game or for this universe, you know, because Castle and World are technically sequels. Um, That would be, like, way better than the lame, like, movie tie-in or the, you know, the kind of, like, cash grab, like, oh, it's a mobile phone game that's just, like, a reskin Infinite Runner. It's like, no, can you just make, like, a sequel to World of Illusion? Like, that would be way cooler because that was its own thing that you had to put smart people on and have them be thoughtful about. And just like there was, uh, like, one or two frames of visuals that I was like, oh, man, that that's that's a bummer that they made that choice. Um, the way Mickey says ouch when he gets hit, I feel like is the one like auditory blemish on an otherwise very successful soundtrack and, and sound effects. <laughs> so you, I'm showing it to you now. These are my notes on visual on, on audio. <laughs> so I got um, two and one of them was Mickey's ouch sound hurts my ears. Yeah. So I actually, because I, I played through as Mickey, like you do, right? And, and yeah. then I was like, God help the people who are, who were like, no, man, I, Donald. It's like really, when you can be Mickey, it's like I'm a Donald. It's like I don't. I mean, you do you, but eh. yeah. I mean, I think Donald is often the star of very interesting and funny cartoons. But if I'm going to choose one of them as my avatar, I don't. I don't want to live Donald's life. <laughs> no, Donald lives a hard, hard life, right. you know. But I, I specifically started a single player game as Donald just to see if his uh, damage noise was as annoying. And it's like a very Donald, like you know, the the duck. I'm not even gonna make an attempt, but you know, like the the Donald duck noises he makes, and it's that, but it's very short and it's like weirdly not loud. And I was like, oh man. I did not expect his damage noise to be the less annoying damage noise. Like it is actually way less offensive. And then on the flip side, uh, Donald and Mickey have, I think their capes are different colors, but they make the exact same magic cape noise. And that noise was very thoughtfully designed because you hear it a billion times and it never becomes grating or annoying. Like it's, it's a very charming little like, magical sparkly chimey xylophony kind of noise and no matter how many times i heard it it didn't bother me once and i was like thank 
God, someone realized, oh, on an average playthrough, you're going to hear this three, four, five hundred times. Let's be really careful with it. Right. No, absolutely. I, I, I agree with that. Um, I thought that the cape noise was very good. I thought that the, you know, you successfully turned a thing into another thing's noise was um, was also, you know, very enjoyable, which is good. Um, for me, the one, aside from uh, obviously Mickey's noise, the one uh, noise I'm just thinking of right now that where I was like, and this is not uncommon in video games. So I was just kind of like, eh, this this game also did this is uh, in the water level when you're swimming, right? Yeah. Every time you hit the swim button, it's like, whoop, whoop. And so then, you know, in some areas, you know, you have to, like, make sure that you're at the top of an area. So you're just like, whoop, 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 whoop. And you're like, I get it. Yeah. But it, this is the thing about water levels. Uh, something about it, uh, up to and including everything about them, has to be horrible. <laughs> I don't know at what point in history all video game designers everywhere got together and said, you know, so we all agree that uh, water levels in our games will be terrible. And everyone in the vo room was like, I, and you know, motion passed. And it's just like, there has to be an annoying sound effect or an annoying swimming mechanic or an annoying air breathing mechanic or an annoying iron boots mechanic, or there's some horrible. Th hey, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. There's some horrible thing that has to be inserted into every water level in like every game it's it's unreal how consistent that is like it's you could routinely bet your life on that with a game you've never played before and you would probably live to a ripe old age yes no you could you could <laughs> you could probably slap bet the dickens out of that <laughs> just to be you know like just non-stop just be like hey like hey, oh man you should really check out this game it's really really good does it have a water level yeah, the, the slap bet the water level makes you want to hang yourself. No, <laughs> no slap bet. No slap bet. Yeah, mm -mm. but yeah. Uh, so you know, and and again, like I said, you know, not not uncommon for games to do that, where every single time you make the swim, you get the swimmy noise, and the swimmy noise was annoying. But you know, you're not in the water level that long, and even in the water level, you're not in the water level that long yeah like yeah sometimes you're out of the bubble right which is which is nice so meh. so so what, what, what can, can i use my final comment about the audio to segue into mechanics because i think i have like kind of a an interesting one no, no? okay i mean i'm sorry <laughs> the curtain falls. <laughs> this episode just but keeps no, ending um so <laughs> Uh, the one bit of music, because all the the levels uh, have charming music that I liked. The opening has its own little music that I liked and, and is very enjoyable. I really did not care for the boss music. Um, I found that like mm. whoa, noise that it makes oh, just yeah, like a, about, just yeah. a little bit grating. And the reason mm. it was only a little bit grating is because, uh, and this is where I kind of segue us into mechanics here, is the... Um, boss fights are all like super easy and short and yep. and they're mechanically all incredibly different and and at least a little bit interesting so as much as i disliked the music i was very focused on the boss because each boss is unique and they don't last all that long because there's nowhere in the boss room to like restore your health and they are trying to make this a family friendly game so they kind of quickly move you through a boss interaction so i was like well if there was a place in the game that had to have sort of annoying music, I'm glad they picked here because I don't spend a lot of time here. And then the victory music when you beat a boss is actually pretty good. So I was like, oh, okay. Well. <laughs> yeah, that's good. yeah, no, I actually, I, I would even go so far as to say the entire game is very easy, you know, but it's not unenjoyable. You know, it's, it's kind of like, um, I, I, I don't, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. I wanted to use Kirby's Epic Yarn, but that one can actually get difficult <laughs> at times. It's just the loss condition is super low. Um, but no, is it is it the game itself is not it's it's just it's just not that challenging. But that being said, I don't think that challenge is one of the core aesthetics of this game. You know, like you don't boot this game up, you know, like 
like slap, slap it into your SNES or into your Genesis and say like, I am playing World of Illusion for the teeth gritting <laughs> challenge akin to Super Meat Boy. Like that's not what you're signing on for. Again, it's you know like it's the visuals, is it, it, the music, the it, it, almost um, abnegation. You know where it's just like you can just play this game without focusing on playing the game. Um, all of that. So yeah, I mean the, the bosses are pretty easy. The stages are pretty easy. With all that being said, I, I will say again, one of the you know blemishes on it is there are some truly weird difficulty spikes. <laughs> you know, the, the one that I experienced that really threw me was uh, when you it's on the cloud level, mm-hmm. right, where you step onto like a platform where it's it's basically nine rocks and they all immediately fall out from underneath you right Ah, yes (laughs) and then and then they all start to disappear and then there's one rock you have to land on right it took me about three tries literally three tries (laughs) like i died three (laughs) times um before i realized that one of the rocks doesn't start to flash and disappear and that that's the one you need to stand on because it lines up with the platform you need to land Mm. on so it, occasionally the game would do weird stuff like that where all of a sudden you'd be like just playing around jamming around you'd be like oh my god okay all right that's fine that's fine i'm, I'm, I'm focused now okay yeah and then and then you know you go again i i felt the same about a couple of the platforming leaps of faith i had to make because <laughs> the the characters move very slowly like you as the player walk at like a gentle saunter, which actually kind of fits with your like you're you're cautiously moving through this unfamiliar world trying to find a, a way to escape. But it's also you're obviously moving that slowly to make it more approachable to a less games literate player, right? And then right. the enemies don't move super fast for the same reason. Um but it is a platformer, which means occasionally you have to clear like a large platforming distance. And I I didn't do like pixel measurements, but if you run and jump, I don't think you actually cover that much more ground than if you are walking and jumping. And I am fairly confident that that's on purpose because there are jumps in like Super Mario Brothers or Sonic the Hedgehog that if you are not running full tilt, you cannot possibly make that jump. Like if you were walking, you would walk to your damn death and that would just be the end of it whereas in this you can never even touch the run button and i think probably make it through the entire game and clear every jump and successfully you know navigate every encounter which is probably not easy right it's probably not easy to design a platformer where it's like you need to be able to navigate this at a saunter or at a dead sprint and we need those things to look different and behave a little bit differently, but not really impact the world in such a way that a less games literate player would struggle to rely on, on doing the simultaneous run and jump. Like it, it's pretty artfully handled, but every once in a while you do come up to a platform where it's like, Oh, you can barely make this jump because they're trying to introduce yep. a little bit of challenge. And then you, you know, plummet to your death. Sorry, you lose a try. And, uh, Yep. And it's just like you plummet to your try. Yeah, you plummet to your try and you're just you're just like, <laughs> oh, oh, I have to be like right on the edge of that platform to make this jump. Yeah, I agree with that. And actually I think the there's only one time that I can think of where you have to run, but you're correct, it's not a run and then jump. It is just a run, which is in the water level with the um where where the sh- on the ship like there's an area that starts to flood yep. and you have to run through that. Yes, which I think you are correct is literally the only spot in the game where running is required and it's it's not run and do anything else. There's no enemies, there's nothing yep. to jump over. You literally just have to hold the run button, which again, for a less games literate player on a, even on the giant meaty Genesis controller, holding down run and then also hitting jump is difficult right that's not something you even necessarily know you can do like oh i didn't realize i could push multiple buttons at the same time absolutely um yeah no i i I agree with that honestly overall my kind of rating on the mechanics is and i've said before there's not a whole lot there and whenever they do try to kind of do a thing it kind of in my opinion it came off a little clunky uh for example the again in the the, the water level because of course it's the water level. of course <laughs> um 
uh, the tridents that fall down at you and the sharks that fire up at you, I thought their timing was really weird. Specifically, the tridents, um, like there would be a set of three that you had to run past. Like they would not trigger until you were basically close enough to the point where like they wouldn't trigger until you were already underneath them. So therefore it behooved you to continue to move forward and move past them. But then the last one in the run would trigger. So that way, if you continue to try to run past it, it would actually hit you. Yes. And I actually meant to write that down and I forgot. So I'm really glad you were specifically mentioning this (laughs) because I was like, Oh, that's kind of clever. And they also visual, they're not spaced evenly. It's not one and two and three. It's one and two and, and, and three. And so there's like Mm -hmm. just enough visual separation between the second trident and the third one where you might be like, Oh, why is that one so much further away? Oh, it's already falling. I got to slam on the cartoon brakes. Right. And I was like, oh, they're they're trying to communicate to you that this may behave differently than what you just experienced. And then on the, the, you know, erring on the side of caution, you have a fairly generous health meter because I took way more damage in the water level than in any other place in the game, including boss fights. (laughs) Yes. And and that's the thing. It's like I said, like, it's not, it's not elegant. It's not, you know, it's not a Super Mario game. It's not something like that where, you know, you're just kind of like, oh, like, because the first time I got tagged by it, I was kind of frustrated because I was like, oh, okay, this is an area that they just want me to, like, run through. So I ran through it, and then I got punished for that. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And then the same thing with the sharks where, you know, I was like, okay, well, apparently I need to be cautious. And so I was, like, a little bit more cautious. And then I got burned for that, too, in a, in a separate way. And I was like, this is... This is kind of clunky, but like you said, they're they're very generous with your tries, and they're very generous with the live l- life. So I was just kind of like, eh. And then the other nice thing that they do mechanically is that when you die at a boss, assuming like if you don't run out of tries, right? It, when you die, you start at the beginning of that. Le- we said stages was the whole thing. Right? Uh, yes. No, no. Levels the whole thing. Stages each little segment. Yeah, so when you, you start yeah, at, when you lose a try, you go to the beginning of the stage. Right, which is nice because basically with the the uh the water level, I got to the boss with one card left, one hit point. And um and you know, I and I literally was just kind of like, "All right." And I just let him hit me, <laughs> you know, so that way I could just try again with with five, you know, five hit points. And so I was just kind of like, yeah, you know, this this is this is fine because as long as you get to that next area, you're just you're good. Yeah, and I, I think um, if you completely run out of tries, you go back to the beginning of the level. But mm-hmm. I didn't see anything that indicated that there's any number of times you could go through all your tries. Like you have unlimited continues, essentially. I believe that that is true. Um, Another thing that uh, that they did that I thought was very interesting with um, with the try system is the fact that a lot of the times when uh, well, first of all, they 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 have an interesting way that they feed tries to you. Um, two of them that I thought were very fascinating is, is uh, towards the end, so things are getting more difficult, right? Um, when you are in the Alice in Wonderland area and there are the little dice that you step on and some of them mm. kick you back like to closer to the beginning of the stage, mm-hmm. right? Um, every single area that it kicks you back to has an extra, an extra life, an extra try mm. before you get back. So basically I started with three tries and by the time I figured out the right dice to step on, I had eight, <laughs> you know? <laughs> So I was just kind of like, oh, I'm I'm probably pretty solid. And then there was another area in the uh, also in the Alice in Wonderland, um, where it's I think it's right before you face big 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 boss Pete, and uh, where basically I got got for whatever reason, and um, uh, and and there's a try between the start of the stage and the end of the stage. So no matter how many times I got got during that process. Um, I just, I literally had basically at that point, infinite tries. I, and, and there's a couple of other areas where they kind of feed you tries like that, that I thought was kind of clever. Yeah. And that's, I didn't take direct notice of that in this game just because it's 
I'm game literate enough that I wasn't losing a ton of tries. So I wasn't like, Oh, I'm going to run out of tries, but I'm not surprised that that's another thing they were thoughtful on the polish for is like, how do we make sure that someone who wants to keep trying forever can do that without like starting the game over? And I mean, that's also true of the password system is even though the game itself is fairly short, maybe you really hate the water level and you want to jump over it. So there's passwords all throughout the game, you know, to basic, not to go to every single stage, but to go to like most of them. And they even uh, specifically give passwords for single player Mickey, single player Donald or Mickey and Donald together. So you, you know, as a, a eight year old or 12 year old or a 32 year old, whatever, like you have your, your password list and it's like, Oh, do I want to play by myself? And I'm tired of Mickey's ouch noise. Where's my Donald password. Do I want to play, you know, <laughs> with my sibling or my spouse or whatever, where's my Mickey and Donald passwords. And it's just, it's, I think that is slightly, even though it makes for a much longer total password list, that's way simpler to give to, I mean, let's be honest, a kid. Let, that's way simpler to give right. to a kid and say, hey, here is how you can pick this game up later and play from a specific spot without saying, okay, so on the player select screen, select how many players are going to play and then go here and then do this. It's like, no, enter these four numbers and it will make several decisions simultaneously. And I think that that's way less flexible to... Um, an adult who's like, oh no, but I want to make these choices and I want this flexibility. But a kid is just like, I want to play with my brother and I want to start at level three. And then they just look at their, you know, their their index card and they're like, there it is. <laughs> yep, that's 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 the one to pick. Um, yeah, and so uh, one of the other things that I thought they did, it was very interesting, is um, how hard momentum carries in this game, um, which I. I'm, I'm trying to think it's it's certainly infrequent enough that I don't think we've really run across it um, up until now, which is that your not only does your momentum carry, it substantially carries um, like, for example, on the uh, it, there's a number of different times where you're on a moving platform. Mm -hmm. If you jump, you continue along like you basically follow straight up Newton's <laughs> laws of physics, you know? Like you continue with the momentum that has been granted to you by the platform you were moving on, so uh, that was that was just very interesting. And once once I got burned by it once, um, I immediately started to account for it. And they do, for example, um, in the cards in Alice in Wonderland, they move side to side. They um, they're moving pretty fast, right? But they do come to a halt. So the thing is that if you just jump at that point, it's it's all nulled. So it's it's kind of it but it was just interesting to see a game that actually had you carry momentum because if i'm and you can correct me if i'm wrong it is a lot harder to do that in a game than it is to just say like you are entirely in control of your own destiny in that sense i don't know if it's that much more technologically complicated it's definitely not the industry norm um and then even then yeah. there are weird cases where there's like a hard line so like I'm thinking like in, in Sonic 2 or probably any of the good Sonic games, but in, in Sonic 2, <laughs> there are platforms that move ludicrously fast and those mm. definitely impart their momentum onto you. And then if you're on just like any normal platform and you jump, you jump straight up as if you had been standing still and the platform will just right. move underneath you. So there's somewhere in the code, there's like, if you are moving at this speed, no momentum transfers but then you go you know that number ticks up one more increment and it's like now a hundred percent of the momentum transfers <laughs> which is obviously super unrealistic but it's it's just a thing you gotta learn it's like oh in in this universe momentum never transfers in this universe momentum sometimes transfers in this universe it always transfers right you just have to know that about the controls um but i, I would say yeah momentum never transfers is far and away the most common and then with sometimes transfers being the, the you know distant second always transfers has got to be a way 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 third for any kind of cartoony platformer oh yeah absolutely and actually i have a a funny side story to this i was playing um borderlands at one point 
and I was on a platform that was moving and it was moving at very long distance. So I got bored and hit the jump button <laughs> and the platform just kept moving forward and I fell to my death and I went, oh, I guess I guess we're not using Newtonian physics in this game. And Megan said, what do you mean? I was like, well, I jumped straight up and the platform moved out from underneath me and I fell to my death. And that's not, you know, the real world. And Megan goes, no, that's right. And I'm like, no, no. Like, and then I, I, I literally <laughs> used the textbook example of if I am tossing a ball on a train. Right? <laughs> and, Imagine there's a fly Megan, like, in the car with us. <laughs> <laughs> and so Ma- Megan, like, was still, you know, just, I, I think at this point, just being stubborn, but she was just like, no, like, no, that still doesn't sound right. I'm like, honey, if, if it, if it worked the way that you're proposing, then <laughs> air travel would be impossible because the moment that somebody got up out of their seat, there would be nothing but mist <laughs> in the back of the plane as they immediately stopped moving and the back of the plane hit them at 500 miles an hour. <laughs> that, that's so, why they have those seatbelt like, oh, signs yeah. all over the plane. <laughs> like, for the love of God, <laughs> a- do not get up for any reason. <laughs> Soil yourself <laughs> in your chair. Do not stand up. Yeah, because- because good God, <laughs> like, look at the the horror! But yeah, so so it was, well, the story is it was, it was it was weird to be in a game that was that realistic. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, particularly with all of the other theming. <laughs> exactly, but um, honestly, to to be entirely honest, like I said, like my I don't really have too much more to say about mechanics because again, this isn't a mechanic. Normally, in mechanics and gameplays, where we have like the meat of it, but I honestly like. I feel like we've done the right thing, which is spend most of the time in the visuals and the music, because honestly, in my opinion, this game is unremarkable from a mechanics standpoint. It doesn't do anything that it really deeply stands out, but that's not what you're playing this game for. Well, it's not what you're playing it for. And I think the, the one super notable thing about the mechanics is there are no complicated mechanics. Uh, There's nothing particularly clever or novel but what matters is the mechanics that are there are highly polished. The way combat works is highly polished. The tries system and unlimited continues is highly polished. The way you have, you don't start with a full life bar, so it immediately communicates to you that getting more life is a thing you can do and that you should seek out is clever and well done. And and like, it's... So it's it's I mean it's platforming 101 but it's like an A++ in that class right like th- this this person yes. did not come out of platforming 101 and they were like oh I'm going to make like a little simple platformer this person <laughs> came out and was like I'm going to make world of illusion and you are going to remember it 30 years later <laughs> and and I I respect that like you don't have to only do things that are novel or only do things that are clever or only do things that are unique to have good mechanics you can have simple mechanics but just execute really really solidly on them and that that's what's happening here yes so with all that being said man does it hold up it does it super does and i'll be honest i actually wasn't expecting it to like (laughs) <laughs> because because we, you know, I, I think it's really fun to crap all over games that are bad, and we have certainly done our share of that. And I think it's also fun to, like, get to be delighted when something was as good as we thought it was going to be or if it was better than we thought it was going to be. Like, I mean, when we played Link to the Past, like, we were not going to be like, oh, it was terrible. Har, har. Like, we knew we were going to gush all over that game. We knew we were going to gush all over, like, Super Mario World, right? Like, that's – and there's nothing wrong with that. It's really a good feeling – I went into this kind of tentative and honestly, I think it's, I think it's Toy Story's fault. Like Mm -hmm. Disney does not have an amazing track record for video games. And even though I remembered liking this game a lot as a kid, I was like, Oh man, I don't know how this is going to look in the light of, you know, matured game literacy. And I was like, yeah, it's a family game. Like this is designed to be approachable for a new player, but it's still super fun. Yes. No, I, I I agree completely. Like, does it hold up? Absolutely. Um, and again, normally, we, like, I try to frame this as in, like, who would I recommend this to? Uh, families, honestly. It's uh, it's play length is super approachable, especially with the password system. 
Um, it's especially the the two player multiplayer, which I didn't get to play a lot of, but from what I remember of it, is you know, it's it's a great way to because again, you know, I could be player one and Teddy could be player two, and you know, if you take point, then you know, even if he's kind of all over the place, you know, like it 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 brings the two players together. So, um, I I absolutely think it holds up, even if you're just playing by yourself as a 30 year old you know just you're like yeah i want to just do this it's it's really a fun game um and uh it it absolutely holds up um there is one thing that i, I want to touch on real fast though uh which is um about half an hour ago um you you Alakazam! on zelda <laughs> ocarina of time with the iron boots and i'm gonna need you to take that back because uh take take it back no <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, so you take it back, or or we are feuding. We're, oh, like th- this is going to be the thing that that ends our friendship is yeah. is the iron yeah. in the water yeah. temple, the iron boots. Yeah. This, yeah. This is that, this is what we're doing? We're feuding. No, we are feuding. We're feuding. 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 The curtain falls. The music plays. The credits roll. Then it all fades to black. And you're left by yourself The fanfare is gone There's no player two There by your side to share victories won But as you slowly progress Down the hall to your bed A few great events Leak back into your head From the time that you spent Traversing the land Battling evil Fighting the darkness Just sword in hand Your memories creep in With the end of a smile 